What is going on guys and welcome back to the Lunar Witch. Today, I have no idea what's going on with these two videos I've been wanting to post. Uh, I told you guys that I was going to post a video on how to manifest and how to meditate. I had both of those videos created. I tried putting both of those videos up, but for whatever reason, the file was corrupted. So I'm going to go off and try to just create something that's a little bit easier right now because I'm a little bit frustrated with trying to post those and I'm going to definitely have to re-record those videos. So I'm going to make sure that this one at least goes up and this one works properly when I put it on there this way. As long as this file is not corrupted, I know that the next video I'm going to make won't be corrupted either. So with that being said, today's video is how to create an altar. A lot of people when they are doing witchcraft, um, they the one thing that they like to do is have a place to work. Now, mind you, the altars I'm going to be showing you today are altars I built that I do my work on as for my witchcraft, and they're also altars for my deities. Now, there's people that feel as though um, you can't do your witchcraft on the same exact altar as your deities. I personally don't believe in that, and there's a lot of people that also don't believe in that. I believe that if I do my witchcraft in front of my deities, it actually helps me with my witchcraft when I'm doing it because I feel their presence when I'm doing it. And I've asked them multiple times through pendulums if they mind if I have my cauldron on the altar when I'm doing my witchcraft and stuff like that, and none of them have ever had a problem with it. So if you are working with a deity and you would like to put your altar together and you would like to do your witchcraft on there, my suggestion is if you really do feel uncomfortable with doing it, create your own personal space and do it there. But if you feel comfortable doing it, I would still suggest using a pendulum and asking your deity like, hey, do you mind if I do my witchcraft on the altar? Because it is technically the altar you're making for them. And some people feel as though it is a little bit intrusive when you take your cauldron or your own witchcraft and you start doing it on the altars that you built for them. But other people, like I said, like me, I have asked my deities, you don't mind if I do my witchcraft on your altars and they don't mind at all. Artemis, I work with Artemis and Anubis. Artemis, over time, was starting to get a little agitated when I did my witchcraft on there. So I moved my cauldron over to Anubis's altar because Anubis has zero care in the world about what I do on that altar as long as I'm not wrecking anything or anything like that. So today I'm going to tell you guys how to create your altars. And like I said, these altars are altars I built personally for my deities, but I'm just gonna show you a few things here and there that you can put on your altars as a starting point. I'll actually tell you how I started my altars before I had my deities on there. And then I'll show you what I added as I put their stuff up and I got their statues and actually made it for them. So let me get right into that. So these are what my altars look like in the dark. These are my altars when they're fully lit by candlelight. These are my altars when I have them going. As you can see, I got Artemis over here and I've got Anubis over here. Now, I have a lot of candles on these altars. The reason you see more candles on Anubis's altar is because Anubis has specifically asked me to put more candles on his altar while Artemis asked me to put more crystals, gems, and all of that stuff on her altar. So with that being said, that's another thing too. If you work with your deities, one of the biggest things I'm going to tell you is to listen to what they say to you. They love homemade things as well. So if you're going to draw a picture for them or create a craft for them or something like that, they love things like that when you take things and you give it to them on the altar. So you can do that, but I'm going to show you the basics as to what I started out with on my altars and I'm going to show you what I had on there before I actually gave it to Anubis and to Artemis. So let's talk about this for a second. As you can see on my altar here, I have a lot of stuff. The things you're gonna notice the most out of this though are those crystals I got going on over here. I have an amethyst crystal in the back, a lot of gemstone crystals, I've got a red tiger's eye in the middle, and a lot of moonstones on here. Down here, as you can see, I have a whole different setup. Now, the wolf has been my spirit animal for quite some time now, and before I even was working with Artemis, I actually made this little thing on the bottom here, just kind of like a little setup, just to kind of go towards what I had as a spirit animal. When you're making an altar, you like, or you at least should, make the altar based off of things that you like, and, you know, make it your area. So, 
before I even made this into Artemis' altar, I left that there, and Artemis was quite alright with that. She had no problem with that. Also, because Artemis is the goddess of the hunt, she actually enjoys little things like this as well. So that worked out completely um, in my favor. As you can see here too, I got little things on the side. I've got these little ivy leaves going up. I actually added these ivy leaves as I had Artemis as my deity because it looked a little plain and once I found out that she was my first deity that claimed me, I put those on there. So things like that are definitely good things to put on there. Definitely a big thing that you're going to notice on my altars as well, candles. Candles are huge to put on your altars, especially if it's your place of work. Candles are awesome when it comes to doing things, especially creating circles. You can use candles to create your circles and stuff like that. Candles are also going to be a good indication as to what is going on within your spell work when you're doing it. As you can see right now, my candle flames, the only reason the, these ones are jumping a little bit over here is because I've got an incense lit and that smoke is jumping into that candle flame right there. But you see Anubis is over here. He's got a pretty interesting setup going on. I've got no smoke going up over there and some of his candles are going a little insane right now, which might mean that he's trying to communicate with me and tell me something, but we'll get into that another day. Going over to here, as I said, you're going to see a lot of candles. You're going to see a lot of crystals, gemstones, incense. Those are a lot of things you would like to have on your general altar. Now you can add other things too, like this right here. Um, when I set up this altar, that arrow wasn't actually for Artemis. I actually got that arrow because I thought it was really cool because this was one of my first altars I ever built. So I got the wolf painting right here that switches while I move and stuff like that. I also got this going here. And then when Artemis claimed me, that's when I started adding other things. As you can see, there's that little green moss looking stuff on the bottom. I added that once Artemis claimed me. Um, I did add that statue once I found out that she claimed me. I got that deer thing right here to hold the candle. And I also got these little candle holders that have little deer antlers on it and stuff like that because Artemis' main animal of choice is the deer, the boar, and stuff like that. So I got her things that were going to pertain to her. So those are definitely good things to start off with on altars. As I said, if you are not working with a deity, you can always use crystals, you can always use candles, you can always use incense. You can put pretty much what whatever you want on that altar and make it yours if you are not working with a deity, and that is completely okay. Moving on over to Anubis, you're going to see a whole different setup here. So on Anubis' altar, you're going to see here, I've got these little gold things kind of wrapped around here, and you're going to notice I got a lot of healing jars, I've got an incense stick, I've got a lot of stuff that I did for him. He loves chocolate, he likes his own drawings, all of that kind of stuff is good. You're also going to notice when I go back up here that I've got kind of like the same setup except I did a little bit something different. I've got his statue right here. I've got all of his candles. His favorite color is black, so I got him black candles. But he's also represented by gold a lot too, so I did get him two golden candles to go along with it. You're going to notice that my cauldron is on here. As I've told you before, I do do my spell work on here. He is okay with it. And you can also tell that it's sitting on a mirror. I will get into why that is on a mirror in a different video. Mainly what I'm going to tell you is I use mirrors to help reflect bad energy. So if something is being brought back to me in some sort of way, shape, or form, that mirror kind of helps protect me from that energy being sent back. But I'll get more into that in another video. And again, you can see here I have a wolf holder that's holding up this candle right here. The wolf closely resembles the dog. Anubis obviously having the body of the jackal and stuff like that. Dogs are actually one of his favorite things. And since a wolf is technically a descendant of the dog, when I got Anubis this, I mean his candles went insane when I put this on his thing. It was amazing. I couldn't believe how happy he was when I put this on here. It was just genuinely a great feeling to watch because you can clearly tell when your deities are not happy just by looking at candle flames. And as I've said, these candle flames have kind of calmed down after I started paying attention more. And they're very big, bright, and a lot of the time they're very still. So, I mean, it just shows that he's a very calm and content with everything that I have going on on here. Now, like I said, on here, I have different types of things. I have obsidian, I have green obsidian, I got blue obsidian over there. And the back over there is rutilated quartz. I mean, I've got a lot of stuff on this altar. And as I've said before... 
gemstones, crystals, anything along those lines are definitely good starters to put on your altars. So ultimately with this, I've shown you guys two different altars. I've shown you Anubis and I've shown you Artemis here and how I've had them set up. Now, mind you, like I said, I've shown you two different altars of the deities that I have represented. If you guys have different types of altars, my suggestions to you guys are like, say you're working with like Hades or Hera or Zeus or anything like that. My biggest suggestion to people is when you are looking up stuff on your deities, make sure you're going to multiple websites, multiple books, make sure you're looking up what is actually associated with your deity because there's a lot of places where like for instance I made the mistake of going onto a website and seeing it and I saw that one of Artemis's colors was not even related to Artemis it was actually gold and gold actually represents her brother Apollo because gold is what his bow is and silver is what Artemis's bow is. Obviously, too, Apollo has to deal with the sun, Artemis the moon, I, so, you know, that lunar energy compared to that masculine energy of the sun, there's a lot of stuff like that that go into play, too. So when you're doing your research on your deities, if you haven't built your altar yet, definitely do your research, figure out what it is that they like, figure out their favorite color, get them a colored candle of that color, figure out their favorite uh, crystal, gemstone, anything along those lines. Uh, Nubis loves obsidian of any kind. So I got a black obsidian, green obsidian, blue, obs blue, blue obsidian, blue obsidian. And there is another obsidian I've been looking for. I can't really find it, but eventually when I do find it, I'm going to get him that obsidian as well. Other stones too, you can get for like, uh, purposes of kind of raising the energy on your altars and stuff like that. So, um, things like Amethyst can help with that, uh, citrine, a lot of things, high energy crystals along those lines can help with third eye, with dreaming, with a lot of energy boosting, things along those lines. So when you're doing your research and you're looking up things like that, definitely look into what they like crystal wise, what their lore is and their history and what happened. Um, from beginning to end and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like read what you're doing before you go and build your altar. Because if you build your altar and you put something on there that they don't like, it's not going to look good. You know what I mean? I mean, you're going to have very mixed results when it comes to working with them. Because like I said with Artemis, when I first put gold up there, her, her candle was obnoxiously like the flame when I lit it was out of whack. I, I could never get it to stand still and I would always have the air conditioning off. I would have no air moving through my room whatsoever and her candle would just go insane. When I finally got her a silver candle, that candle flame went steady. There was nothing wrong with it. And it was the same exact brand of candle, just a different color. So when you're doing your research, do your research on multiple levels, whether it be a book, a website make sure if you're doing if you're reading websites you're going to multiple and they're credible and make sure that they all say fairly the same thing you know because what I found out about Artemis on multiple websites that I went on to and a couple of books um, silver was one of her favorite colors so I got her silver obviously being the goddess of the hunt I got her a lot of stuff that had to deal with like the forest and animals and stuff like that. So it was just things that I read and read about that I was like, okay, well this is going to be really good to add to her altar. I found out that her favorite animal is the deer. So I got her the deer. And you know, with Anubis, he loved obsidian and he likes black and there's a lot of things that go into it. So. Again, like I've told you before, I don't want to rant on, I don't want to give you guys too much information when it comes to things because I want to make sure that you guys take in what I give you in these videos and be able to put it out there into what you guys are doing in your craft. So I really hope this was a helpful video. Again, I am very sorry that I didn't get the how to meditate or how to manifest videos up. Those files got corrupted and I'm really doing my best here. I definitely got to re-record those and try to get those up. This is kind of going to be a test video to make sure that everything goes up and is working well. And as long as this one works, those two will be up very soon. So thank you guys so much for coming onto my channel today and enjoying this video. If you guys did enjoy, make sure you guys are leaving a comment down below to let me know that you guys are actually enjoying this content and let me know if it's helpful to you guys at all. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, it is very helpful to me as well if you guys subscribe. So thank you so very much to those who have. And for those of you that haven't, I hope this was all extremely helpful to you. But until next time, I will see you here on the Lunar Witch. So good to be back.